Hello everyone. Today, we are going to read a wonderful story, a very inspirational story. The title of the story is Jadav and the Tree Place. The author of the story is Vinayak Verma and he is the illustrator as well. Pratham Books has published this book. This is Jadav, a tree planter. He loves tree places because they are full of life. No tree places make him terribly sad because they are full of dead things. Years ago, Jadav was walking along the banks of the great Brahmaputra River when he arrived at a big, empty, no tree place. It was dry and hot. The sand was powdery and striped. Striped sand? How odd! Jada went closer to take a better look. Oh! But they weren't stripes at all. The ground was covered in snakes. Last night's floods must have washed them ashore, Jadav thought. These snakes weren't slinking and slithering and swaying about like regular healthy snakes. When Jadav walked among them, they didn't hiss or run away or try to bite him. They just lay about like old ropes, tired and still. Poor snakes, they are dying from the heat. If only they had some shade to lie in. If only this no tree place had some trees in it. Jadav couldn't bear to watch the snakes die. It made him so terribly sad that he sat down and began to cry. But he quickly came to his senses. No more crying. From now on, only trying. He jumped up, ran back to his village and began collecting all the bamboo shoots he could carry in his bag. Regular plants won't grow in the hot sand, but bamboo will. Bamboo is strong. Jadav brought the shoots to the no tree place and started planting them everywhere. It was hard, hot work and it took years. The river grew thin one summer and flooded the next, sometimes bringing more sand and sometimes taking it away. Heavy rains came and went, but Jadav kept on planting. In time, the bamboo took root and began to grow. As it grew, it brought shade and the shade brought insects. The insects burrowed into the ground and the earth below the bamboo trees began to change. The dry and white became rich and brown and the dead sand became living soil. Jadav was no longer sad, but he wasn't happy either. He looked around his bamboo grove and thought, a few trees place is nice, I know, but how wonderful it would be if this were a many trees place. The idea thrilled him. 
So Jadav went back to his village and began collecting many more seeds and saplings. He filled three big bags with Arjun and Ijar and Gulmohar and Korai and Moj and Himalu. Now that our few trees place has a lovely brown soil, we can plant all these and more. Jadav brought his new saplings and seeds to the few trees place and planted them all around. It was hard work, his back hurt, and it took many years. The orange and blue skies turned purple and pink, and villages became towns. The wind grew laden with dust, and the river became gray. But Jadav's insect friends helped to till the soil, and his tall bamboos gave him shade and cooled the air. And Jadav kept on planting. Soon his Arjun, Ijar, and Gulmohar, his Korai, Moj, and Himalu, and all his many other plants dug in took root and started growing. As they grew, they spread new seeds and the new seeds in turn took root. Shoots became trunks, trunks grew branches and the branches reached for the sky. The few trees place that was once a no tree place now became a wonderful green, many trees place. But what's a many trees place without many tree creatures? When one came, the others followed. First came the birds. They flocked and flew in from near and far to make their nest in Jadav's tree place. There were vultures and pelicans and storks and ducks and warblers and thrushes and wagtails and chats. Next came the animals. They skipped and swung and sauntered in to make their homes in the many trees place. There were buffaloes and deer and rabbits and gibbons and elephants and tigers and rhinos. Finally, there came the snakes. They slithered and swayed and sashayed in to cool themselves in the shade of Jadav's trees. When Jadav saw the snakes, he sat down and cried happy tears. He was so happy that he wasn't even afraid of getting bitten. Jadav's tree place had filled with feathers and beaks and wings, with claws and tails and fangs. There were spots and splashes, stripes and flashes, and green, green everywhere. The tree place was a forest at last, and Jadav was a happy man. Then Jadav had another thought. Many trees in one place is good, I know, but how wonderful it would be if there were many trees in every place. So he grabbed his bags of seeds and started walking across the world. And as he walked, Jadav started planting the seeds in all the no tree places he saw. 
and he planted and planted and planted. But there are so many no tree places in the world. There are more no tree places than tree places now. This is terribly sad, but Chada does not sit down and cry this time. Jadav plants and plants and plants some more. It's going to be hard work bringing all the old forests back. The seas have begun rising and the winds grow cold. Towns have become cities and Jadav is growing old. But he keeps on planting and planting and planting. Jadav will keep on planting until the whole world is a happy, lovely, lots of trees place. Jadav in real life. Jadav Mulai Payang is a conservationist and recipient of the Padma Shri, one of the highest civilian honors awarded by the Indian government. Jadav lives in Majuli, Assam. At the age of 16, distressed by the sight of dying snakes that had washed up on a sand bath banking the Brahmaputra, Jadav decided to plant some trees in the spot. He started small with bamboos and grew an entire forest plant by painstaking plant. This was back in 1979. Over the next three decades, Jadav and his tree planting have managed to change the soil in the barren area. The 550 hectare sandbar is now a lush, dense forest and home to a variety of flora and fauna, including elephants, tigers, apes, deer, and many species of local and migratory birds. Jadav continues to visit and nurture his forest every day, planting wherever he finds empty patches. Growing up with a mango tree, a tree planting activity. Just ate a mango, loved it, want another? You can go to a shop and buy one, of course, but it's a lot more fun and free to use the seed of the mango you just ate and make a few fruits of your own. All you need is time and patience. First, find a nice patch of empty land near your house. Get a friend, sibling, or grown up to help you plant the seed you saved in that patch. Make sure the soil is loose and there is plenty of sun. It may take several weeks of waiting, watering, and watching before your seed turns into a plant. So don't worry and definitely don't hurry. Once your seed germinates and grows into a healthy mango plant, get ready for a lot more waiting, watering, and watching. Take care that your plant doesn't get eaten up by insects or animals or get stepped on by someone. If all this waiting is making you feel bored, read a few books, sing some songs, and plant some more plants. After a few years, as you grow taller, your mango plant will grow tall with you until it becomes a big tree that you can climb and picnic under. 
This is when the real fun begins. By now, your tree will have started making its own mangoes, which you and your friends can eat. Even better, those mangoes will soon start attracting other mango-loving creatures to your tree. Birds, ants, squirrels, bats, monkeys, spiders, and lots more. Some of these creatures will come to eat the fruit. Some will come to feed on the tree's sap. Some to drink the nectar from its flowers and some creatures will even come to eat some of the other creatures hanging around the tree. But it's not all about eating. Some creatures may come just to rest in your tree's shade or to take a nap in its branches. Your tree has many different uses for every different creature. Spend some time every day watching who visits your mango tree, at which time of the day they come, and what they do. Write down what you see in your notebook. Also, draw pictures of what you see. See how much you have done and learned with just one mango seed? Isn't tree planting fun? Now, Imagine how much fun Jadav must have had planting his entire forest full of trees. Let us see some of the difficult words that we saw in today's story. Slithering, move smoothly over a surface with a twisting or oscillating motion. When you see a snake, the way it moves, it's called slithering. Slinking move smoothly and quietly. Swaying. Swaying means move slowly and rhythmically backwards and forwards or from side to side. Laden. Laden means heavily loaded or filled. Distressed. Distressed means extreme sorrow or pain. Sauntered means walk in a slow, relaxed manner. Sashayed, walk in a stylish yet casual manner. Sandbar, sandbar means a narrow sandbank along a river. Fangs, large sharp teeth of a dog or cat or snake. Migratory. Migratory means animals or birds that move from one place to another according to the seasons. Try these questions. Where do you live? Is it a no tree place or few trees place or a many trees place? What would be the experience of the people living in a no tree place. Do you think it is a good experience? If you want to plant trees like Jadav, what trees would you want to grow? How will you take care of it? I really enjoyed today's story. I hope you like it too. Until next time, it's bye from Saumya.